Welcome back, everyone. So in the spirit of Halloween, I've been looking for places that I haven't been, that may be nearby, where I can look at some more Halloween-type stuff, oddity-type stuff. And I found this place called Terror Trader in Chandler. Now, I haven't taken pictures all throughout the store, so that if you haven't been, there will be a good bit more for you to see. Even though inventory can change, I like to leave a little mystery so you can discover this on your own. Love these little popcorn things, by the way, because it's just like the little ones that are from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie as a kid. Now, throughout the store, as far as purchasing, they have tons of stuff from horror movies. They have old horror DVDs. They've got comic books. They have tons and tons of masks. So if you're in this area and you haven't found a mask that's quite scary enough or that you really like anywhere else, go to them. And there's going to be a lot of different masks for you to choose from. They also have a lot of original artwork from people. They have um, neat oddity stuff like old medical tools and equipment. And they have everything from, I'd say, probably like the 60s. Uh, 70s, 80s, all kinds of stuff. In addition to just a little oddball artwork that some of the local people do. Um, different things made out of latex, monsters, just all kinds of ooky kooky good stuff. And in the back of the store, they have like all kinds of creepy stuff, including um, different skeletal remains. And they have two haunted artifacts. The two haunted artifacts they have are a Ouija board and a record player. And before I show you the Ouija board and the record player, you're going to see the little plaque that tells you the story. Uh, but because it's teeny tiny, I'm also going to uh, play it like I made, you know, kind of like credits at the end of the movie. Um, I added that in, and then I'm going to read it as well to you. And first up is going to be the Ouija board. And then you'll see the picture of each item. You also have a ton of creepy dolls. So the creepy dolls will be in between the two haunted items and their stories. So the Ouija board, placard. This vintage 1930s spirit board was surrendered to Terror Trader in May of 2022. The following is a testimonial from the family who asked to remain anonymous. Bum, bum, bum. This Ouija board has been in our family for decades. It was originally my grandmother's and was shelved in storage boxes for most of the 80s and 90s. Upon moving from New Hampshire to Arizona in the early 2000s, this board somehow found its way out of our attic and into our lives. My daughter and her friends started playing with it, as you would expect teens to do. And after many months, we started noticing strange occurrences. First, it was items falling off shelves for no reason. Then strange voices could be heard through our hallways at night. A year passed and our family situation became dire. My daughter became severely depressed. My straight A student son, fell into drugs and started hand tattooing strange symbols all over his body. My husband left us, but was killed two days later after his departure in a car accident. Ever since his board surfaced into our lives, we completely fell apart. I first tried to burn the board, but it wouldn't stay lit. I then submerged in water to desperate to attempt to drown the forces destroying our lives. Nothing seemed to work. Finally, I hired a medium to help me and she sealed the board and it was kept at her house for over a decade till she passed away. Recently, my grandson, who deals in flipping old storage lockers, purchased an abandoned unit in New River, Arizona. As he was going through one of the many boxes, he came upon the exact Ouija board I got rid of over 13 years ago, and unknowing of its history, he brought it back into our lives. This board has caused an immense pain and suffering, so I immediately begged the owners of Terror Trader to take it before it did any more harm to my loved ones. And the board... When you see it here in just a second, you can see that it's got like uh, black on the sides. She did say she tried to burn it, wouldn't stay lit. So 
So what do you guys think? Do y'all think it's a real story? Do you think it was something cool to have in a collection? Do you believe in that? I mean, she did say it was years later after the Ouija board thing that all the stuff happened. So is it just easier to blame Supernatural for things that would have happened either way? Or do you believe that that board is either cursed in some way, brings bad luck, or, you know, be curious to see how many people um, believe that. Um, this other part of the room, this is where all the spooky dolls are. They have an asylum straight jacket there. Um, the dolls themselves didn't have different stories with them, but they're all pretty creepy, especially those little clown ones that they had with the little grumpy faces. That one looked like, I don't know what that foot is. I don't think that's a foot. It doesn't say anything with it. That's like a, just a little corpse doll thing. But then they have these. Um, if you can read on there, some of these skulls are real. Some of the bones are real. And some are replicas. But the ones that are replicas... They have little notes on there so that you know. I really loved this thing right here. This little like mermaid fishy bone thing. And that is a real human skeleton. So has a little note on it there. See, it's Chuck. Um, Chuck isn't for sale. A lot of the real bone stuff is not for sale. I think there's laws with that too about like buying and selling um, true human remains. And that may be why they don't. <clears throat> um, this one coming up is a prop from a ride. That guy's pretty cool. He kind of looks like if Walking Dead was around in the 80s because he's got his headband on. This was even cool, this little monkey paw thing. So I have it up there long enough for you all to read. But it's supposed to be good luck. I always think it's funny that um, parts of an animal that are detached are good luck. Because obviously it wasn't good luck for them. Because someone took it from them. Right? Like a rabbit's foot, they got their foot cut off. The monkey paw, they lost their paw. Now, this placard about the one that um, it says, you can see it has a blue color. It says it was because it was submerged in salt water for hundreds of years. You'll see it coming up here, and you'll be able to compare. That's why I saved it towards the end. It's through glass, but if you look at the top, you can see the blue, and then the eye sockets, you can kind of see the blue, too. This Ouija board has no story with it, so... Um, Au revoir. Au revoir. So it must be a French one. See how white that skull's teeth are? What if those are real? I do like this vampire kit, but I don't know if y'all watched Pawn Stars when I was around. That vampire kit that they had on there, that one is like, I would love to have that kit. This thing's kind of hard to see too, through the glass. But it looks like some little mummified, little demon-y, little monkey thing. So I don't know if it was a prop maybe from a sideshow that they got. And it's behind glass, so again, I'm sorry about the reflections. I wish I could get a little bit clearer picture. And then that's another one of the creepy dolls. And then right after this, it's going to go into 
the story of the record player that they have. This is the story, and just like with the Ouija, I'll read it. Warning, this vintage phonograph, known as the Suicide Siren, has been deemed cursed by the Catholic Church. Approach at your own risk. The first recorded ownership of this record player was in Ithaca, New York, back in 1951, after a distraught mother sent her only son off to fight in the Korean War. Four days after his departure, she, found, she was found hung from a stair banister. The record player was still spinning beneath her. The phonograph was then passed on to her sister, who died of poisoning a month after ownership and then eventually inherited by her niece, who tragically jumped out a four-story window in New York City. At the discovery of each of these women's deaths, a record titled Blue Velvet was found spinning in their homes, proving the song was playing during their suicides. Under suspicion, the phonograph was eventually given to a Catholic church in Bronx, New York, in the late 1950s. The parish priest sensed negative energy and decided to securely lock the player in the basement. Two years later, most of the church burnt down during the Easter holiday, but the record player remained intact. It was locked in a state storage facility until being auctioned off in 1973, where it was purchased by a man named Louis Swift from Camden, New Jersey. He knew of its sinister history and made sure to remove the needle from the tone arm so the song will never be played again. Mr. Swift died peacefully in 2017 at the age of 83, and the phonograph was purchased from his estate. It is unclear if the record player or the record itself is cursed, but the family has been promised the needle will never be replaced. Now, this one's really interesting because it says that the Catholic Church deemed it to be messed up. But what's really cool as far as the presentation of the store is they have a blue light on it, and they have a recording that sounds like a record player that's telling the story. So same with this. I want y'all to comment. Do you think it's what it says? And I looked up Blue Velvet. It came out the same year that that lady um, hung herself. It said it was in 1951. It's that song, Blue Velvet. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed it and the little artifacts. And the um, next video, I'll share decorating with y'all, and then we'll get into transitioning some of the angels and stuff over to uh, vampires and whatnot.